Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be covering properties. Properties is less of a Unity specific thing and more of just a coding thing. Uh, it's used in C Sharp and probably other languages. It's kind of a like object oriented thing. And it's to do with setting and getting variables. So it's just generic coding. It's not specific for any type of game. You know, this covers everything. So you're going to probably find a use in this. Um, I'll give you a quick example. So let's say you have um, an image component like this is what I'm going to be using. When you uh, set the sprite, it's just setting a variable in the image script, right? Now you can't really look into the image script because it's like behind Unity's wall of you know copyright or whatever. You can't look into that code properly for the engine. As far as I'm aware, you can't. Um, so when you set a sprite, you know you just think you're setting a variable. You're not calling a function to change the sprite. You're just setting it as a variable. But when you set that variable, you'll notice that it actually updates stuff on screen, which obviously means some code elsewhere has to be getting ran. Whereas normally, when you set a function, when you set a variable like x, you know equals ten, all it does is set the value ten. Doesn't doesn't change anything else. So this is a way I'm going to explain and show you a use, or you know explain why you would use it for certain things, um, and get into it. But before that, I'm going to thank my Donators on Patreon, thanks to Paul Robinson, Phil Baum, and Wesley for their $5 donations on Patreon this month. If anyone else would like to or is able to help out, then the link is in the description below. But apart from that, let's get into it. So here, I go, here we go, just got an image, okay? Simple, simple setup. All this other stuff is from other videos. I've used the same project. Uh, if I go to this script I've made, it's empty. Properties example, because that's what I'm showing you. I'll give an example. So, okay, by default, uh, we'll, we'll leave the starting because I'm probably going to use that. Well, actually, no, we'll, we'll just build it up. So got an empty script and some things at the top of your script well you might have inside the class a variable you know so let's say you have a public variable you know so you get your public um, integer x is equal to um, 100 for example you've got your public in x now as you know when you go back into unity on the manager the actual value for the variable will show up there we've got x is 100 and obviously you can have private uh, string name or like uh, character name is equal to Nathan or whatever and as you know that one won't show up in here when it compiles because it's private now the thing is one of the best practice uh, things when it comes to coding and something that you should do is pretty much in every case make everything private okay because it's called encapsulation it's a topic in programming and when you make stuff private it means that you can't accidentally change it and it also doesn't like clutter up your inspector in unity for example uh, obviously public and private is not unity specific that's just coding most languages have public and private um, as far as I'm aware, I say most, there's probably, it's probably not most, but you get what I'm saying, a lot of them do. Um, especially object-oriented, I mean, it might only be object-oriented, I, I don't know. But the point is, public is accessible from anywhere, right? So if I just, I don't need those other two scripts. Well, let's make a new script on manager, uh, just because it's the easiest place to reference from. And let's just say we call it, um, you know, image changing, right? So this script is going to change an image. Now... I'm just making this example off the top, top of my head. I know it's going to work, but it's just an example. So let's say on here, right, on the properties example, um, this has a private image. Okay, I need uh, to import uh, using unity engine.ui, like that. Okay, and then, so we've got the image, and then you might have a function public void set image. Or set image and you want to take in a sprite and all you do is you just say image dot sprite is equal to sprite okay so you're setting um, the actual image thing on your script to the sprite that they passed in okay so here I can just say um, private properties example just because I want to get it in here um, and then void start uh, properties example Prop, oops, properties example uh, is equal to get component properties example. Okay, so that just means that this script has that reference, and then after we've done that, let's just say um, we want to say properties example dot was it change or set set image. Now we want to pass in a sprite, so on here we'll just have a um, sprite to set. Okay, um, generally you have private at the bottom. I know this is private but it, I'm going to separate it because it's serialized field which means I can assign it in the inspector. So we're going to pass in this sprite, okay? So this is how you would typically do it, right? If you're calling a function 
um, on another script, you would just reference the script and you would call the function, pass in what you need to, right? So for example, this properties example has reference to the, oh wait, this is on the, um, no, never mind, this is on the manager, so that's not gonna work. Let's just remove that. Let's just go put all of that on the canvas, sorry, on the image just to make it easier. So uh, properties example and image changing. So on the image changing, you'll pass in a sprite like check mark, you'll press play, and if it all works well, then the check mark should get set. Um, no, it didn't because there's no reference somewhere. Um, because for some reason I got rid of the, yeah. Um, so on the start method, uh, image is equal to get component image. Obviously you need to actually reference the image script to be able to change the variables on it. Well, the point is, right, when you change this um, image, it it's almost like calling a function because it seems to also change the visuals on screen as well as just what's stored on it. Um, is it not working again? Properties example, what have I done wrong? Private void start, image equals get component image. And there's no reference here, image.sprite is equal to sprite. Probably because I should put this in awake. Um, basically what's happening is they're both getting called on the first frame, but the, it's getting called in the wrong order. Um, get components should really be put in the awake technically so that there's never any misreferences. But anyway, we can change that. Now that's the example that's kind of already built in, right? You're changing a variable on the image script, but it's actually changing a visual on screen because obviously the image script in the back handles that. But you think you're not calling a function. So how does it do multiple things, right? You're just setting a variable. Well, the way you get it to change or like run code like that. So what you can do is you would write, for example, um, I'm just going to use the console as an example now. So if we have properties example, let, let's just get rid of this. Um, so I will keep the reference, but we don't need that. Okay, so we reference properties example, which is this script, which doesn't have any code currently. So let's write um, a function here. Uh, let, let's sorry, let's have a variable, right? So it's private uh, string, and we'll call it, you know, player name. Okay. Now, let's say the player name. Well, it doesn't have to be equal to anything, but let, let's just say it's equal to Nathan by default. Okay. So normally, if you want to change that, you have to write a function, right? Like uh, public um, void set player name takes in the player name says that, that. That's like the long-winded way of doing it which you can do. Uh, you can also do like the uh, get set method, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. So we can have a variable, okay? So we can have a public variable, so a public uh, string called player name with a capital P um, like that. And we can do the open and close parentheses like this. Parentheses, well, squiggly brackets, whatever you call. Um, and what you would write is you would write get. Now, get just means you know, this is what happens when you reference this variable, right? When you when you reference the player name variable, you are saying you want to return player name lowercase, right? Okay. So this really isn't being treated as a variable as such. It's just a way of accessing this variable. This variable is what you've stored. It's private. You know, you can only change it through here. And this handles the actual changing. Like think of it as this is the middleman between another script changing it and this is the actual value you stored. So as well as writing that, you know, it's pretty basic. That's that's what happens by default. You can then say set, and then you can say um, player name like that is equal to value. Now value, you'll notice it goes blue because value is like a built-in name as such. That's ba that, that just means whatever you're saying it as, right? So if we go here and then we say, um, properties example dot name, like name, player name, um, is equal to, you know, David, like that, okay? So, on here on, whoops, here on the awake, uh, actually there is no awake because it doesn't need to be, this player name thing you can change, just change the string, um, and it sets it, right? So if I was actually in, well, what we'll do is we'll put it in debug mode. Just give it a second. So you can put in debug mode and you'll see uh, on, well, I've got all the scripts here anyway. I can put them somewhere else, but you get what I mean. So it says player name is Nathan. I press play and it sets it to David, which is what you'd expect, okay? Um, 
well, the thing is, that's that's what happens by default. When you change a variable like this, it's, it's doing this, right? It's just, uh, if you reference it, it gets, it just returns the name. And if you set it, you do that. That's, that's what happens behind the scenes. It's just done for you by default. But what you can actually do is you can write extra code in here. So let's say whenever you set the player's name variable, right? Whenever you set the player's name variable, um, like let's say you just wanna spell that out. Whenever you set the player's name variable, you also want to, for example, debug.log the player name, right? So maybe as soon as you um, set the variable from anywhere else, you run that code, right? No matter what, whenever another script changes, it's like you're running, it's like calling a function to change it, but you're just saying the name, right? So we press play, so it says, it says Nathan, and we're changing it to David. But as you notice up here, we actually, it says David right now. So it's actually debugging that even though all the other script is doing is just changing the variable. It's just changing the variable player name, right? So the way of using this, this is just an example, obviously. Um, also, one thing to note, if you just say like, uh, you know, private, a uh, bool's not a good idea because it's true or false. Um, I don't know, private int x equals 10, right? If you mouse over this, or here you go, you can actually see encapsulate field and use property or encapsulate field but still use field. So if you look on here, um, I don't know what the difference is actually. I don't think there is any difference. Um, but let's say you just press that, it does it for you, right? It, it obviously lays it out a bit differently. It spreads it all out. The point is that's the default, you know, X is big X now. Um, just so you know, you're referencing that part of the code rather than the build, the private variable. So this is one way of doing things. That doesn't mean you should do it everywhere, but there are times when you want to do this. So like um, sometimes it's just, like, why would you bother writing? Oh yeah, uh, sorry. If I just go like this, you know, you, you can put it all in one line if it's if it's like not too much. You, know, you can just write. Um, like, let's say you don't want to have to write a getter function and a setter function for like every. Obviously, this is when you probably should split it up. It just looks a bit messy. But let's say you weren't debugging the name. Let's say you just just wanted a private variable that you want to be able to access from elsewhere, but not accidentally. Um, you can do this. Now, as far as I'm aware, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure you can actually just do the get and set thing. Um, I'm, I'm not certain, but I think you can um, just do this. If that's all If that's all it's doing, you can write that. Um, but I'm not certain, actually, because the problem is that wouldn't know what to reference because um, it's... Oh, I've messed up the brackets here. Where's that one going? Um, he doesn't doesn't know what it's referencing, right? Um, I mean, even here, when you um, don't have it already, it then adds it in for you because it's wrong. So, in reality, you should already. Oh, so I don't have this. Oh no, the strings up there playing it. You should say get um, thingy return player name, <coughs> and then. Um, set and then um, player name is equal to value yeah I always get this wrong when it's oh there's too many brackets everywhere is that it? I've got an extra bracket or something all right um let me just split this up because I'm getting confused by my own brackets here let me just so get return uh, player name space set do that okay there we go um, so what you want to do is you want to do this for things that when you change them other code needs to be called almost like a callback but it's automatic so yes people use functions for this but to be honest sometimes writing a function just to get a value when you can write this for both I, I don't know it's up to you to use it but I hope just from doing that example of the logging, like, you know, just changing a variable you can log, you'll, you'll see uses of this, I hope. Now, this video is dragging on a bit. Obviously, I said it should be only 10 minutes, so I'm going to cut it off here. But if you have any more questions about this, then obviously feel free to ask below. But it's meant to be quite a basic thing, you know, just showing how you can call code from just setting variables. So, obviously, hopefully it's something new you've learned. If you didn't know that already, then obviously give it a like and subscribe. I mean, I'm just, I'm just messing. But obviously, if you will, then that will be greatly appreciated. But um, yeah, join our Discord if you haven't already. Obviously, like, subscribe. I've mentioned everything I need to mention. You have plugged everything. So um, apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.